good evening. Welcome to TTRPG, where we will be playing Haunted West, a game by Chris Spivey and Darker Hughes Studios. Tonight, we will, we will be using the narrative play style, quick draw, as well as safety tools. This is a horror game and content warnings are in the chat, so please take care of yourself first. We love you. My name is Christina Sisto Kindle. I use any pronouns and I'll be your balladeer tonight. We are playing in the alternate timeline of the Haunted West where we, Reconstruction succeeds after the Civil War, leading to a more equitable United States. The strange and the supernatural also hold more power. The veil is thinner and sometimes strange things just might slip through. Our north winds blew our posse out of, out of town, past a strange settlement marked with occult symbols and into the Texas frontier, only to face down a demonic force of nature that rolled in like bad memory. As we find ourselves once more outside the booming town of Three Sisters, Texas, Paragons, it's a new dawn. What are you doing? Oh, and let's introduce ourselves. I'm so sorry. We go <laughs> gosh, I'm, I'm everywhere today. Uh, yeah, let's jump in with uh, uh, Anna. Can you tell us who you are and who you're playing tonight? Yeah, I'm Anna, aka Archival Dust Money, most places on the internet. Uh, and I play Alice, uh, Alice Hayes, who is a practitioner, uh, is her paragon. Uh, a playbook class, uh, which means she has, it's one of two magic classes in the system and she has gone beyond dabbling and has reached into real power and made real bargains uh, with entities she probably shouldn't have. Um, she's not in a great place after last night. She paid a pretty heavy cost for information. Um, we did kill a demon, but then she released another one into the world. So it's kind of broke even, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> And how about Vin? I see your caption from Google. It's okay, we can edit. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that there's nothing, no bad vibes here, nope, not at all. Can you exit out of Google and come back and see if that, like if Zoom is confused? How about now? I check. Okay, but that's my my laptop uh, mic, and that is gonna be trashed. Okay. Um. 
Okay, I see it reacting now. I don't, maybe my cable's going out on my interface, which is possible. Um, crud. Maybe. Uh, We've got gonna, you now. Okay. So, yo. Okay, if, I'll just switch to my laptop <clears throat> then. I'm so sorry, y'all. All good. Okay. All good. Um, I'll just figure that out later. Okay, let's stick to that. Um, are you up for introducing yourself in your playbook, Ben? All right. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Ben Evan Bucks. Yes. <laughs> I was ready for my spiel. Okay, all right. Hi guys, I'm Vin at VinVoxVA on Twitter and I'll be playing Gabriel the Holy. And Dana? I am Dana Ebert. You can find me online as Mistress Dana RPG. I am playing Luv Garo, who is a gunfighter paragon. And Cameron. Uh, my name is Cameron Blair. You can find me on Twitter at WorldSmith underscore Cam, and I am playing Cormac McFarland, uh, and I am the Resolute. And Nikki. Uh, I am Nikki, and I am producer here at the channel, and I am playing Orla Moon, and she is the... Oh my gosh, I forget every freaking time. The Libertine. <laughs> and she's a saloon singer. And she just quit drinking and she's not happy about it. <laughs> so we find our paragons uh, waking up the morning after this fight with a strange demon who arrived in a blaze of thunder and lightning from the clouds, rolled in like a bad storm. Um, the, uh, the headless horseman known as El Muerte Oh, sorry, El Muerto. I can speak Spanish. Gosh. Uh, that you all recognized as a Dulavan sent on a destruction quest uh, that traced back quite a ways. So where do we find you all this morning? Well, before anyone has quite risen. Orla. Yes. You are awakened to strong arms wrapping around you and a calloused hand clapping tight over your mouth. Uh, <laughs> Orla wakes up with a start, no, looks at the hand, can tell it's yours, and sticks her tongue out and licks your hand. <laughs> Annie, uh, where am I? Where am I at right now? Uh, we're in the, we're out on the, and she opens the tent flap. Oh, it's just you, Ola. Why'd you lick my hand? Why'd you cover my mouth? That's doing what now? You had me wrapped up real tight, and then you put your hand over my mouth. The easiest thing to do is it worked. Snapped you out of it. Her face becomes very somber all of a sudden. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I, uh, I, I, I haven't had like a night tear in a long time. Do you want to tell me about it? Yeah. Not I'm not sure there's a lot to tell. It's, it's not a, you know, it's not a nice, uh, it's not a nice story. Well, I think we all don't have those, those nice stories. If you go and talk to everybody else. Yes, that's fair.
I do probably. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I know I haven't been, uh, you know, very forthcoming when you ask me questions about, you know, my life, but. You don't you know owe me anything, but if you want to talk about it, I'm here to listen. Well, we've been together for a long time now, at least a long time for me. And, you know, I, 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 I think I, I used to tell myself that I, you know, I wasn't telling you because I was, you know, I was on the run. I was trying to lay low, but, you know, I, I knew, I knew in the back of my mind that you knew that. And so, you know, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I think, uh, the reason I wasn't telling you is because I was, uh, I was afraid of how, how you'd look at me if, uh, if you knew where I came from. Out of all the people here, you're worried about what I would think. To be completely honest, I'm only worried about you think. That's nice, but... You've done so much for me, I don't think I could judge you for anything. And you've heard all of my stories. Many times. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes you get, you forget you told me them. Well, Ola. If I tell you this, you gotta, you gotta not tell the others. Absolutely. But, uh, if that's what it takes to make you comfortable with telling me. You know, uh, you know, my, my name, uh, was noise loof. That was, uh, that was a later thing. It's a pretty fancy name. I figured you'd give it to yourself. I'm glad you, glad you think so. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think, I think my old name was a little fancier. Is uh. Elodie Winnicott was, you know, was the name my, uh, my ma gave me. I think I like Louvre better. It suits you. Thanks. Um, and as she, she sees that there isn't any recognition on your face when she says that, she uh, solemnly nods and, and elaborates more. She says, uh, yeah, so I wasn't uh, originally, you know, I wasn't originally from Louisiana. Um, you know, for that matter, I was kind of from, from everywhere for a while, all over the place. But uh, first, uh, first 11 years of my life, I, I lived in Arkansas. And, you know, Papa Winnicott was, uh, he was a governor. And uh, he was trying to shut down all the, the drilling for oil on the southern border. Uh, some, you know, I, I figured there were some people that didn't like that very much. Uh, Stud getting, getting threats, uh, him and his family, but he was, uh, he was stubborn. That's, you know, I think, I think everyone in my family was like that a little bit, but I was, uh, I was the oldest of the kids. I had a, uh, Oldest to seven, I had six younger siblings. And, you know, one night while we were sleeping, a bunch of, bunch of guys showed up, uh, lit a house on fire. Barricaded the doors and windows first. And, you know, we was trying to get out of there and I I was trying to take the kids, you know, I was trying to to lead them out and then then mama, she was she was holding Annie, the youngest. Uh she was a toddler and you know, I think she I think she inhaled too much smoke cuz she she was last, she kind of collapsed. I went back for uh for her and Annie and um you know, papa was trying to kick down the front door. Finally did and and you know, my my other siblings ran out front and just as I was shaking mama and she wasn't waking up and I was, I was trying to, you know, take Annie with me. Uh, 
I heard gunshots coming from outside. So instead of instead of going that way, I I, I took Annie and you know as as eleven, I I couldn't. I tried to move Mama and I couldn't. And um, I took Annie down to the cellar. Uh, you know, a, a lot of these big houses, the, the cellars and basements, they're, they're bigger than the rest of the house. And, uh, Papa was expanding it. It's mostly dead. Um, it's unfinished. And so, you know, I took her and went, went as far away from the, the main house as we could. And even then, just started digging with my hands, uh, crawling through this dead trying to trying to get away but the heat was, was something else luckily for us we managed to find some pipes that gotten installed but you know maybe not hooked up wherever they went we were able to breathe through them so uh it's a long-winded way of saying that we we waited there until the house was almost done burning you know so did so did these guys and they they knew that you know that there were three of us weren't accounted for and so they started going through the wreckage and uh and there we were i was you know just huddled close in a little dirt hole pressing in on us like we've been buried alive and uh you know me trying to trying to keep it any from crying so they don't hear us. Sometimes I still dream about that. But, um, you know, eventually the sun came up, they skedaddled before anyone could find out. And we made it out. But, you know, it's the, it's the funny thing about inhaling smoke is that, um, you know, even even if you make it out, you know, sometimes Sometimes you died in the first 30 minutes of that fire and you just didn't know it. And, and Annie didn't make it uh, less than three days later. Uh, but I did. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think that day changed me. I think, I think something got inside me. And I don't know if it was the smoke or I don't know if it was the fire, but, uh, you know, I feel like I was different after that. Uh, I, you know, as, as, as angrier, I started, um, you know, becoming violent, but, you know, I enjoyed the violence. Uh, that stayed with me for a long time. It, it's still with me. And so I, you know, I, I, the way I think about it when I think back on that day is I think that's the day that, you know, the devil got inside me. It's been there ever since. I can understand that. Mine doesn't look the same as yours, but I definitely have my demons. I appreciate that, Ola. You didn't get to the part about why you're here in, in Three Sisters. Yeah, I mean, how much time you got? <laughs> Do we hear the others stirring yet? Is... Uh, Cormac's definitely up, but probably just tending to the fire. Alice is sitting in the same place she was sitting last night after the battle with that demon uh, next to the fire. Gabriel was definitely sooner, um, probably trying to uh, keep last night as a dream. As you're all kind of shocked, um, there's not a lot of, of sound for uh, Louf and Orla to hear from the other three. One's just kind of sitting in stunned silence. Um, but you do, uh, <laughs> you do hear her hoof, hoof, uh, the sounds of hoofs uh, as you see the some cattle drovers uh, roll by. Um, this the the landscape cut by this wide herd of cows in the in the distance, um, almost a almost a comforting sign. It's the, one of the first 
other signs of life you've seen since your fight. It's a little bit of a sense of normalcy. Um, and they'll kind of nod at you, um, Alice and McCormick, as they pass by the fire. Um, and you'll hear them just like, hey, can we post up a, a rest here? Is that all right? How many people are in this group? Uh, it is uh, three drovers and a herd of cattle. Yeah, but our uh, our party might be a little bit scarce, so don't expect much lively conversation. Y'all all right? Hi. Y'all been traveling? There's there's a town not too far from here. Aye, there is. We know it. All right. Well, mighty spooked. As they uh, start to dismount, I think you see the eyes kind of track along the ground. Um, Alice, are the symbols still still there? Oh, absolutely. You see, you see their eyes just follow along. See those occult symbols and like on the ground. And the drover is like half off their harness. It's like, you know what? We're gonna keep moving. Y'all have a good day now. Mounts back up and the horses take off. You tend to have that effect on people. Alice, that wasn't you. You know it. Right. Uh, Louvre and Orla is still in their tent, right? Yeah. Okay. Cormac has nothing to do else to do right now. So he'll just tend to the fire. Gabriel, in your wagon, you see the spider that had set up set up camp has spun a enormous web across the back of your schooner, um, and it's just kind of sitting in the center of it. Almost, you almost feel the eyes on you as it just watches you as you start to come to consciousness. To say something. <laughs> it does not but you do see in the <clears throat> web some a shape that is a little bit reminiscent of one of the symbols that Alice um, put on the ground almost as if it's practicing okay um jokes aside uh Gabe is gonna just uh as they come to vaguely inspect the web and just, I have no part of this in what crawls out the shooter. Um, Alice and Cormac, you see Gabe exiting, exiting the shooter. Morning. Good morning. Uh, we're looking a little scarce. Is is everybody all right? Uh, Lou and Orla are still in the tent. Uh, everyone else is accounted for. I see. Um, like they open their mouth to say something, then close it. Is, is there anything I could possibly help you with? Um, I'm a little disoriented, but uh, I'm all right for the most part. Why don't you come sit by the fire, rest a bit more while you're waking? I'll, uh, I'll get some food started. That sounds wonderful. 
Thank you. All right. I think uh, back in the tent, Orla's um, has Louv helping to lace up the back of her um, her corset, and um, and as that's happening, uh, Orla uh, says, "Louv, who did you take care of before you started taking care of me?" I don't know how you wear stuff like this. It's just it's so complicated. Well, it looks really nice. I put up with it for that reason. Don't dodge the question, though. Um, not, I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Ola. It's very clear that you've had some sort of uh, sisterhood. And if all your siblings died when you were little, then you found it elsewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. Um, you know, I uh, stayed with a family friend uh, for, for the next several years after that until I was old enough to, to leave on my own. He's an old man, um, uncle. Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't really know, you know how to raise a kid, let alone a girl. And, you know, he was, he was a drover and I went with him and it, was, it wasn't half bad. You know, I, I was kind of a shitty kid, but... Um, once I was old enough, you know, I, I thought I'd go to New Orleans and, you know, make make some kind of living there, uh, big city. And, you know, the things I said earlier, um, the thing inside me. Uh, you know, I hung out long enough. I started to find, you know, other other women who felt the same way. and. You know, we, we started something, yeah. Uh, sort of a sisterhood, like you said. And, you know, we, we got up to trouble. Uh, started small, you know. Uh, doing, doing bad stuff, but, you know, you, you ask me, it's only ever the people who deserved it. Um, Did you rob a bank? Yeah, I wish. You think, you think I'd have that horse outside if I robbed the bank? Oh, I don't know. You could have lost it all gambling. You're quite bad at it. <laughs> I Yeah, I can't argue there. And I, uh, you know, I, I had gambling problems here and there. But um, but no, we'd... Uh, nah, like... All sorts of, you know, shitheads, corrupt landlords. We'd, you know, we'd rough them up a little. Um, sometimes a bit more than rough them up, but... That's you know, why you it, get along with Cormac so well. Uh, it's one way to put it, I guess. Um, you know, me and Cormac uh, getting along. Yeah. Um, sounds like a thing. Uh, but yeah, then eventually it escalated. And we started getting a reputation. Uh, you know, they, they called us wolf women. Uh, you wouldn't believe the stories they told, but, you know, uh, at a certain point we started targeting, um, you know, some of the, some of the oil companies, <laughs> some of the, some of the big shots, uh, not just, uh, you know, not just landlords, but even uh, like, even corrupt lawmen and judges, things like that, and, you know, blew up a few places. <laughs> Not sure if uh, anyone out here has heard of any of that, but uh, yeah, they, they was my sisters. We, um, I, think we, I think we all enjoyed it. And, uh, you could say I took care of most of them, but um, you know, the, the, the youngest one, uh, <laughs> we called her Odie, you know, like, like Coyote, like, like we was a wolf pack and, you know, she's the little one. And, um, you know, my, uh, my gun, it was, it was originally part of a pair as a, as a twin. Um, she has it. Uh, I haven't seen a, haven't seen her in a while. We, we had to, we had to split, um, you know, near the end, it was, things was heating up. People was starting to look for us, you know, be, before that, um, 
you know, when we lived that side of town, uh, you know, we were dead, lower than dead. Nobody even knew who we were. But um, but that's when they started trying to figure that out. And one time we, we came back home and just whole two, three blocks of people, just all dead, most gruesome way. We, we didn't know what caused it. Uh, but we sure got blamed for it. So we, we had to... We had to get out of Dodge. Uh, you know, there were, I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, my nightmares came back uh, last night. It's the first time I've been spooked that bad since then. I, I saw some things while I was heading out, but, you know, so it's a story for another time. Yeah, I think we all got a bit of a fright last night. Um, I think I'm ready for some tea. Oh yeah, yeah. Just let me, uh, just let me uh, re retie some of these laces. Uh, I think I almost got it. I think I'm, I think I'm getting better at it. It's been eight months. I'd hope you get better at it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like tying your shoes. Um, you know, that's why, why I wear cowboy boots. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I had a really, really fancy education up until, you know, up until I was 11. Then I just kind of quit school. Uh, so uh, I, I, I appreciate your forgiveness in, in not being good at certain things. And then Orla's, after that's all done, she steps out of the tent. By that point, a handful of flapjacks are ready. Sun is fully up now. Uh, the clouds have all cleared, just, just miles and miles of blue sky uh, above you, uh, which is a relief, honestly. There's not a single trace of the demon that you fought the night before, except for the symbols on the ground. Yeah. You weren't all scared and horrified. It would be a beautiful morning. Of course, he also makes fucking flapjacks. What a guy. Arla's going to start brewing tea. Uh, what are uh, Alice or Gabriel up to? Uh, it appears to be a very quiet breakfast, but for good reasons. Horrifying reasons, but for education reasons. Alice is enjoying breakfast, uh, but as everyone comes out, we all survived last night, but the next fight's going to be a lot harder. Need to be prepared for that. You ever do anything like that before, Alice? I have. Like, how how many of those have you fought? <laughs> that specific one. That was the first. Others like it, similar to it. A handful. Jesus. It's never easy, but we have things at our advantage. I have literally zero skills against things like that. And it would seem that we are one and the same in uh, that uh, distress. We both have ways with people, and that's something we need as well. The demon that is we can talk down a demon with our charm and grace. Don't you think? I could certainly try. Hey. Well, going up against a demon like this, it is 90% preparation. We'll need your skills to do that. But I have his name now, the demon who is pulling the strings. Uh, so... So uh, that's the move then? We, 
we hunt down this demon? We don't have to hunt it necessarily. We prepare, we summon it, find it, banish it. In theory, it's well, quite simple. What do we need to prepare then? Uh, I need supplies, a number of things. I think we can find most of it in the city. And we'll need to find a place where we can do it. There are other people here who know magic like this. We may want to find them, see if they can lend a hand as well. Those uh, witches that were wandering. They seem to be helping the locals, so they may be, they might be useful to us. Nice. So, uh, you know, I got a, I got kind of a random question. I, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't go to wizard school or whatever, but uh, those, those symbols that you put on the ground, uh, you ever, you ever think of carving those on a bullet? That's clever. Probably. It might work. I, I don't know much about how bullets work, whether or not that would affect it flying or. Don't they have ridges cut into them when the gun is fired? That could ruin uh, the symbol. No, the, the barrels. Yeah. Only on some... Of the, uh, yeah, the rifle in the barrel. I... Uh... I don't know much about guns, so. It's all right. Uh... Give it a try. I can show you the symbols. We can, we can definitely try it. It's in this demon we're going up against it's not anything like what we faced last night um he's far more powerful luth is what... going sorry i thought you were no, go ahead i thought that was a, a the period at the end of your sentence i apologize uh luth is going to reach over and take alice's hands and drop a handful of silver bullets into them and and she says um yeah if you can just draw them on there i can uh you know i can grab a hacksaw or something and try to try to etch them in i can do that with what we learned last night he wants us to be separated so i think that's the worst thing we can possibly do now everything that's happened to all of us i think is connected She says, without looking at Orla, I think. I think um, after she's got her tea, Orla goes back into her pack and takes out the lap harp again and sits down and starts playing. Um, picks something more cheerful from back home and not something that she would have played uh, for Liam, but it's something that maybe during the start of their courtship we might have heard in pubs. Um, and so as she's drinking her tea, she's just strumming away and not singing it, just the melody. Cozy scene here as your campfire starts to burn down, do you feed the fire or let it go out? Let it go. Starts to burn down to the embers as the sun rises even further. Move takes the dregs of the tea. <sighs> hmm. Chamomile, huh? It's not bad. Yes, that's how you pronounce it. Right, we best get ahead and back to town. Oh no, Me. we can't hear Ben. Oh no.
There we go. Here you know. I I didn't say anything important. I promise. Uh, yeah. With that, Cormac will just make sure the fire dies quickly. Uh, is done properly, and then we'll just head over to his horse. As the smoke kind of trails into the sky, um, are you all heading back to town then? Yeah. Yeah. Alice and stick together, so Orla's sticking together. If she sees Cormac leave, she starts leaving. As you all make your trek back, uh, taking a similar path as you followed, um, you pass by the same farmhouse. You see the kids playing in the in the garden. They'll all wave at you from behind the gate, guarded with those symbols. I think. Um, did we when we met the family? Did they? Did we ask them if they knew where the witches were from? I don't think so. No. Okay. I think Orla is going to um, stop everybody real quick. Um, I'd like to ask the mother a question real quick, if that's okay with everybody. Especially if we're going to need supplies. And, uh, she'll hop off and walk up to the house and look for the mother again. You see the oldest daughter, uh, kind of runs up to the gate. It's like, hi again! Hello. Um, so, how was your trip to the desert? Quite boring. You wouldn't like it. Sounds awful dull. Do you all need water or supplies? Actually, I was hoping to talk with your ma, if she's around. Sure, of course. Come on in. She'll gesture uh, into the house where you see the door is open, uh, letting the, the breeze kind of blast through the house. Um, and you see the uh, the mother who you met and know as Belle in the in the kitchen. She's chopping up um, vegetables from the garden and wrangling two of the of the other daughters. Um, we'll look up when you enter. So, well, hello again. Good morning. I had a question about those women that came that helped you all here. The, the nuns, them. you called them. Yes, the sisters. Right. Um, do you know where they're from? Oh, where are they from? Like a direction they came from or where they might live? They were, they were on horseback. Uh, they came from the, the south. Um, didn't ask where they lived. They seem to be from all over, lots of different accents. But uh, they said that the prayers had said that we needed help, we needed protection. And so their prayers led us to them, to us. I think maybe they were headed into, I assume, into, I assume they were heading into the, into Three Sisters. There's a church there. Go to pray. Right. They said that they were, they were a sisterhood of an Ada something interesting um thank you bell everything all right you look shaken dear it was a long night whatever you came out here for i hope you found it i think we did we well you too. And then she'll come back out um, and ask uh, and talk with Alice about what Belle said. Do you have a way of communicating with people that you haven't met before, Alice? Perhaps we can send them sort of some sort of message. Not really. I... Well, maybe their prayers will tell them to come to us then. Uh, 
whatever they're using to seek people out. Can we track them? I say looking at Lou, possibly Cormac. How many days ago was it they were here? Bell did Two? tell us that, but I can't remember. I think it was it was within the week. It'll be hard to find, but there's a possibility. I think we'll just would, uh, well, there's a tracking skill, actually. Do you want to go ahead and, and roll for, for tracking? And remember, yeah. you do have a ton of jacks. If you a ton of jacks. A metric For summoning and banishing a demon. <laughs> uh, and how many ja would jacks give us? What again? Uh, Jax, help you control <laughs> the narrative on what you find. So you can spend Jax of the currency of the system. So you can spend them for things. Let me find exactly where it is. So if you want to spend uh, three Jax, that adds a moderate impact on the situation. Spending four peels away, multiple layers. Five plus, you could just track them. You want to spend five jacks on this. And how many do we have? Like 25 something? 21. I'll do four. Four. All right. How about you roll as well? Okay. Not, not very good at all. So it's so close. I got a 19. <laughs> Okay. But my skill is 16. Oh, no. Okay. No. So, yeah, let's spin those jacks. And all right. Uh, Cormac, you, you kind of follow the trail. You see a well, kind of well worn path. You see wagon tracks where you were, um, or let's share that they were on horseback. And you do see uh, the faint imprints still. Of, of horseshoes, different horseshoes than your, like a different size, almost like um, the horses are smaller. Um, and you can like follow ponies? Them. Yeah. Something, or maybe even like donkeys or mules. Okay. okay. Yeah. And they are from, uh, followed from the north. And you can see there's also a, a small river that's there. Um, a little crossing, and they almost seem to follow the river uh, back towards the town. So, well, uh, Alice, do demons not like running water or something? Depends on the demon. Minor ones are affected by it sometimes, but this one that we're hunting is not. It's not minor. Right. Well, they moved along the the uh the riverbed, so they're sticking to fresh water. But they're heading back to town, so we head down that way. We should find them. Lucky for us. Are you also following the river, or are you cutting back to the trail that you took? What's faster? Probably the trail you took. The river winds a bit. Yeah, trail would make sense. It takes about that same time, uh, most of the day, to get back to town. Um, and your travel is, is fairly easy, but you still keep every now and then the wind will blow the wrong way and your hackles will raise as you remember those clouds blowing in uh, on like the hairpin turn. A shadow that crosses your path gives you a bit of a start. And um, you do see another herd of antelope moving um, through through the brush. And it's like you're hyper, hyper aware of everything around you. But you do make it to town as the sun is starting to set, uh, painting the sky. Uh, you see the bustle of, of people moving around. Um, the schoolhouse is uh, 
uh, has some of the kids playing out front. Uh, you see the bar lit up all ready for the night uh, and a new soap box uh, set a little farther away, uh, occupied by, uh, by, by the preacher, by preacher, preacher Creedy. When Orla uh, sees the preacher, she starts unbuttoning the back of her dress. <laughs> she takes it off and puts it in her pack. She's not giving him the satisfaction of seeing her fully dressed again. Uh, I think you also see the cattle drovers that uh, you encountered, uh, or at least their horses. Are they? Uh, were those the voices saloon. familiar to Orla when the drovers were there? Uh, one of them was you recognize as as Jackson. Um, he runs crews through through town every now and then. Got it. Yeah. Uh, where do you all want to go? Uh, Orla's going to look for Jackson. Assuming that I heard him, like, start to get off his horse and then see the marks and get back on his horse, because I doubt the tent's very thick, so. Mm -hmm. uh, walking into the saloon, you see the a, a big group of, of drovers uh, up at the front by the stage uh, watching the performance, just the piano, uh, but a, there's some saucy dancing happening uh, above on the, on the balcony, some of the girls. Uh, twirling and showing off. A uh, familiar sight as well. Uh, behind the bar is the bartender. She's got uh, like wooden trencher cups, basically, uh, all it's kind of slamming them down with drinks. Um, you hear kind of like, I'm waiting for my shipment to come in. It'll be fine. We'll be back to normal in no time. The windows are uh, still boarded. Um, well, I guess they were newspapered now. Now they're boarded. Uh, and yeah, things are starting to get back to normal here. Uh, and Jackson will look up. Hey, Orla, why aren't you singing? I have business to take care of, but um, do you have a moment? I need a favor. Any, anything for you, of course, Miss Orla. Right. Uh, come over here. And she's going to take him to like the most private table. Um, and sit down. Um, he'll he'll join you. There's a chorus of like hooting and hollering behind him. <laughs> Orla rolls her eyes. Um, this morning, I think you might have seen some some marks that on the ground that were there for our protection, and it would be um quite the favor for me if you didn't talk about what you saw there this around around the town. Especially around the preacher outside. He already doesn't like me. That was you? It wasn't me, but I was there, so... It would affect me if you started telling people about them. Whatever it is that you're messing with, you can get out. I can, I can help you if, you if you need. I appreciate that, Jackson, but I'm fine. I've... Got it covered, and she looks back at um, Lou and Cormac and Alice and Gabriel. Yeah, I was going to say, probably at that point, everyone kind of, everyone else steps in, and Cormac just kind of looks over and sees the guy that he was talking to. Jackson will lean in. I don't know if you know, but there's some new folk in town. They're looking for, looking for stories about this kind of thing kind of got that creepy thing going on. Is it a group of women? Yeah. They say they're nuns, but I saw a necklace or something. It looked different. Did they say nuns or did they say sisters? Sisters. Right. Well then, um, do you know where they are? Last I saw they were at the church. Praying. Grand. Um... But you'll keep it to yourself what you saw this morning? Uh, if it... Or, or are you sure not in any danger? I'm not. I'm fine. I promise I wouldn't lie to you. Can I do a bluff call? Absolutely. Or... <laughs> um, that is a 37 out of 85. Oh my gosh. All right. 
Uh, I did deception. Is deception fine? Bluff is for cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 37 yes, out of 85. Okay. Yeah. All right. You pick up five jacks. What do you want to do with those? Uh, Jackson is not going to utter a single word. I'm going to use whatever many, however many jacks uh, I need to use to shut this guy up. All right. Um, he's, you, you see him, his, his gaze will flick to what, you know, to be the bulletin board. Um, he's like, I'll be quiet, Miss Orla, but you just be careful. Apparently there's shapeshifters about some, something. That's what those sisters were talking about. They were looking for somebody. Huh. And she kind of side looks at Lou and then back at Jackson. Um, I appreciate it, Jackson. Uh, here. And, and she'll reach into her bag and pull out a token that's like a drink token and like give it to him. Uh, you can have your next drink on me. And um, I'll sing your favorite song next time I'm up there, okay? I appreciate it, Miss Orla. Yeah, better go or people start talking. Right. And she'll get up and walk off towards the church. Assuming everyone heard that and is going to follow her. <laughs> and if they're not, then she's doing it anyway. So. Is that uh, anyone? Sorry, go for it. Sorry, definitely following. Uh, but as we're heading in that direction, I do want to fall back uh, kind of behind everyone with Cormac. So I can quietly talk with him as we're walking. Uh, that's easy to do because Orla's just chatting away at Gabriel as if we haven't spoken in a while. And she's telling you all the stories of all the random shit that's been going on in the tavern. So looks at the two in front of her, looks at the two behind her, kind of shrugs and kind of talks to herself a bit. Fall back. This all looks like it's connected. She needs to know what happened. Before we fight this thing. Before? No, when it's dead. Hurt yourself. Um, as you continue walking towards the church, uh, you start to see these notices posted. Uh, at Louvre, I think your eye touches it first, but it's just these, uh, it's not a wanted poster, um, but it just is, it's kind of that same size, very large parchment, kind of stuck to all kinds of surfaces with tacks and pins. And it just says, beware, shapeshifters um, if you've seen anyone acting suspiciously um, engaging in the occult um, being out late at night uh, be, be careful and it's just like a list of things to watch out for um, all kind of pinned up around town and there's some gruesome illustrations of uh, a man shifting into like, a bear and one has uh, a woman shifting into a wolf on it as well. And those are just stuck up all over town. Once you start seeing them, it's hard to stop seeing them. Uh, it says, if you have any information, contact Josie Weller. And uh, there's a address which you recognize as the boarding house. Okay, and I presume that I don't recognize this name. No, it's a name that you haven't uh, haven't seen before. Y'all seeing this? I mean, like, who the fuck is Josie Miller? Problem for us. Probably one of yeah. them sisters. Probably. Yeah, great. Just what we need. 
Well, whether or not there's a shapeshifter here in town, that's not any business of ours, but a lot of these warnings listed are things that we are doing or will be doing. So probably going to have to leave town afterwards. I mean, look at this list, like half the people in town are doing these things. Just speaking from experience. Everyone at night, even if they do those things, doesn't think other people are doing them. So even if more than half the town is doing that, everyone may or may not accuse the other of doing all of these things. I can't hear you again, Ben. Um, you find your way to the churchyard. The door is open. You see the pews all lined up inside. Uh, there's a faint uh, sound playing. Uh, someone's playing the, uh, there's a small organ inside. No, nothing like big and grand. It's just a small little box organ. Um, but there's an old hymn being played. And you do see um, about 12 people, uh, veiled women, in the pews, kind of scattered around all over the all over the church, none of them sitting next to each other. Uh, some of them sitting in the pews with the book open on their laps. Some knelt in prayer. Uh, others kind of walking back and forth up and down the aisles. And if you enter, they none of them really give you much of a of a look. Some of them will glance over. Um, and you see a range of ages from probably the teenage the teenage girl to an old woman and come from all over who looks like and the leader here looking around you do see a woman sitting at the front uh, i guess she's kneeling at the front of the church uh, in the front pew um, she hasn't stirred at all and some of the, you see some of the other women kind of look to her as you enter, but she's deep, deep in prayer. Uh, Orla will walk over and just wait. Um, anyone else entering the church or? Well, I guess what, what's everyone doing? Will, but she's going to hang at the back. She's not going to go and, and sit down. She she looks uncomfortable. Will... Will spot that. Go ahead, Alice. Uh, I'll stick with Orla. I right, Cormac will spot Louvre and stick with her. Abe is going to go in. It's a comfortable place for you. Um, you've walked, walked pews like this before. Uh, the coolness of the night air in the church is, is a very familiar one to you. Um, you join uh, Orla and Alice, or you make in your own way. Um, I want to Orla. As the three of you stand there waiting, she closes the book. Um, sets it uh, back up on the pew and will stand. Uh, she's a very tall, she's a very tall woman. She's about six foot one and look down, adjust her, uh, adjust her veil. She has a long black veil um, with lace on the ends and will kind of slip a, a necklace back in, into the kind of folds of the dress and say, hello. Fellow pilgrims? No. Not, not, not pilgrims. Um, I think we, we need to talk with you about yeah. some things that are happening in town and near town. Things happening in your town? Of course, that's why we're here. 
Right. What were you expecting to be going on when you got here? There's a great disturbance. We've been called to this place. Called by who? By God, of course. Right. She's gonna look at Gabriel. <laughs> this one's on you, bud. <laughs> um, what exactly um, would count like as insight? Like, would I use uh, deception to kind of uh, read her, so to speak? Um, I think that, oh, gosh. That's what a great religion? question. Yeah, um, or I would say religion or even ingratiate might work. Um, or just straight up personality. Um, where is religion? Um, religion, religion, religion. You know what? I did not see a religion one. I'm so sorry. My it's a um, scholar because you it, there's like different oh, kinds. Of course, of course. Right. Yes. Theology. Thank you. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I'll, Anna's right. It's it's theology. It's under the resolve. Okay. Oh well, uh, it works either way. I got a fifteen. Uh, out of 19. All right. Uh, she's going to turn to you, Gabriel. Um, and you see like kind of a, a nod of like believer to believer. Um, are you wearing anything on your person that would signify that you are uh, a preacher? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Other than like their garb, which is kind of like um, just a Black tunic, uh, whatever that uh, uh, indoctrination would be, very general. Like, not really something that most people wouldn't catch, but you can see that she she catches that um, and has that little spark of recognition. Uh, you do sense that she's mostly genuine about feeling calls to this place um but you see on on her person that necklace she slipped back uh, you see you do see like a saint's medal but you also see a symbol that looks something similar to what what alice drew in the sand some sort of protection symbol so it appears to be both and and she will kind of reach a hand out to to all of you uh kind of clasp each of your hands in turn and say you can call me mother abbess i'm the leader here of the sisterhood of ada lamans anything we can do to help we'll happy we'll be happy to do that pleasure is all ours of course and thank you for your kindness we are very much indebted and like they're just giving a look to Orba like <laughs> um I I'm not sure exactly what help we need but um our friend here Alice uh, might be able to steer us in the right direction of what kind of help we need or you the group that did the symbols uh, at the property outside of town? Of course, yes, the protection prayers. Somewhere else need protection? What is your experience with that? Oh, that's a very long story, my dear. Perhaps we go to the rectory and discuss. I think that'd be wise. She stands uh, or she turns to uh, the rest of the sisters and just says, sisters, and they all will stand. 
and kind of crowd around her. And as they're all standing, uh, Lube, you see one of the veils slip to the side and you recognize one of the faces. It's Odie. And she sees you, her eyes flip to yours, widen in shock, but you see her join the ranks of the other sisters. Um, and they all gather around the mother abbess um, and she'll just say, sisters, I will be back. Conduct yourselves with grace and dignity. And they all say, yes, mother. And uh, we'll sit down, like move as a group. It's very odd, very unsettling. Uh, and she'll make her way back to the rectory and kind of motion for you all to follow her. I will follow. Um, and just things I'm watching out for. I have a number of expertise around this. Like I can identify fellow practitioners and believers in supernatural forces. I can spot charlatans or someone making connections to the weird. I can um, kind of sense and identify evidence of weird activity and presence and stuff like that. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out for all of that, kind of gauging who these women are and whether or not they'll be of use to us or a danger. The sense that you are getting is that these are indeed very, very powerful women and their connections. Well, good intent lies at the heart of their connection. There's an edge of danger there, an edge of something that just doesn't sit right with you. And Gabriel, you kind of get the same sense as you're moving, moving there as well. You see, it's all the right things being said, but there's just something bubbling under the surface. Um, so I have a similar thing. I have a propensity for the attuned that I can sense that which cannot be seen. What am I feeling as I'm standing next to Lou and watching all this go on? Um, I think you would notice the connection between one of the sisters and Lou. You would see that, that, that glance. Mm -hmm. And you see that the sister who was looking at Lou, you can see her shoulders kind of droop, almost as she's carrying something extremely heavy. Yeah. Um, on the, the other side of that coin, initially Louvre looks like, you know, she's not going to follow. She's going to like park herself here. But then um, after that glance, she moves to, begins moving to follow the group. Right. That answers my question. And uh, Cormac follows Louvre, uh, keeping his hand on his hip uh, near his. Uh, his gun belt. And as you all pass into the rectory where the mother abbess sits waiting for you, I think this is a great time to take a break. So let's let's take a break and we'll see you back in a bit.
Welcome back, everyone. We just found our paragons uh, following the trail of the mysterious witches, nuns, uh, into the church in Three Sisters, where they're sitting down to meet with the self-proclaimed Mother Abbess here in the rectory. Um, this uh, very tall, um, elegant looking woman. Uh, she has, uh, she's gonna take down her, um, take down the, the veil and start to like fold it, uh, fold it up very reverently and puts it down on the table, puts her Bible on top of it and kind of folds her hands. Uh, she's a, a middle-aged, uh, she's an Asian woman with long dark hair. Um, she'll just kind of look up at all of you. How can we help you? Wondering what your experience with protective symbols. We saw them out at the farm. They seemed quite well made. Thank you. Practiced. And your experience with these? I'd say extensive. It's an area of study for me and my sisters. Something that we were we were called to. We find ourselves um, here helping, helping people in need. And we sense that there was a great need here. Do you maybe know what it is that we might be thinking of? Are you the ones that are putting up the signs about the shapeshifters? Yes. We are working with, uh, her name is Josie. She's an investigator, very fierce. Doesn't like much to do with us, but she does like the doors that we can open. Interesting. Is there a problem? I was just curious. Haven't seen any signs like that around here before, so I was interested. We are doing something similar, helping people, not with shapeshifters, but other issues that have popped up here. You uh, must be very, very careful. Our senses are strong. There's, there's something here. There is. There's a demon. There were two, and now there's one. You see, she kind of clutches the Bible close. A demon? What manner of things are you dealing with? Quite dangerous ones. Do you have any experience with demons? Nothing. A de demons that I would say are from this earth, evils, yes, but nothing, nothing like the evil you speak of. The cruelty of, of men and maybe some monsters, but nothing like actual demons. Are you sure you're not mistaking it for some kind of beast? I'm no. I were quite sure. We're not mistaken it. We will must go deeper than we know. Perhaps it is connected to this shifter that we seek. It's not. The powerful demons like this one, they, they'll have a number of monsters, lesser demons in their service, like the one we killed last night. So you think perhaps that our quarry is, I'm confused, it's, it has nothing to do with yours, but could be working with yours? It's possible, but honestly, I don't think it matters to us one way or another. 
came here, I think, hoping that you all might be able to help. But if you have no experience in this arena, then. Well, it's it's certainly an area of interest, but uh, an actual mm -hmm. demon, no. A demon this powerful is not a good teaching moment. You'll all end up dead if you're not careful. How can we help? You know the symbols. I, there is some spell work I have to do before we face this demon and your assistance could be useful in that, setting up the barrier. Of course. Tell me of this demon, what is, what is it like? It's, it's powerful and manipulative. Enough to go on, but enough to, I'll be saying my prayers tonight, that's for sure. I will, I'll be, we'll, we'll be here. We'll be happy to help you and we'll send our prayers up to, to our own angel as well. Am I getting the sense that she is playing us? You get the sense she's not playing you, but she is, she deeply, deeply believes that she has some sort of connection. You see that when she says our angel, like she grasps her, her necklace, uh, there's right. something beyond going on. And Cormac, uh, you would pick up on that too. Yeah. Uh, Alice, is there anything physical that any of us can pick up on that would be a sign of things? Like any sort of moniker that you see before it shows up or to know that its presence is heard or seen? This one I've mostly noticed, its eyes golden, usually in reflections. Right. And sister or mother? Sorry, I'm a Catholic boy, so I have some old habits. It's all right, dear. You said golden eyes? Yes. Uh, I, uh, what connection do you have? What is your angel like? Well, our order was founded Saint Ada Lamont, a martyr, and from France. That's that's where our order comes from. But we do have we do have an angel on our side, a beautiful benefactor. We've only ever seen light, and it's like you say in reflections in the chalice uh, in, the, in the in the windows sometimes a beautiful burst of, of light we know that whoever this angel is maybe it's even ada herself she's guiding us and she guided us here Cormac just leans back and turns his, his, his body a little bit towards Alice and just places his hand on his hip and looks at Alice. She looks a little uncomfortable at all of this. She's not, this is not what she was expecting and she's not entirely sure what to make of this. Orla, um, sensing that everyone else is uncomfortable, says, right, so about the shapeshifter thing. So did this Josie person come to you or did you tell this Josie person that you were coming here? We met on the road. She saw our, our wagon um, and our ponies and she offered to uh, accompany us since we were going in the same place. She, she was, was coming concerned. here specifically? Yes, she said she was following some sort of lead. 
Has she, she ever brought like up us. a name when she's been talking about who she's looking for? I don't know. She she like me spilling her spilling her beans, but if it's helpful, it would be yes. so helpful if you could tell me. It's sort of with an E, Elodie, perhaps. Right. Interesting. Emily? I don't think I've ever met somebody with that name before. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. Maybe somebody goes by, by Ellie, perhaps? Perhaps. I could ask around town. Um, and this Josie, do you know where she's staying? Yes, she is at the, um, oh, she's at the boarding house. The rest of us are just taking room here, but. Grand. All right, then. Thanks for the information. That's very helpful. We'll keep an eye out for whoever she's looking for. Be very, very careful. Please. You do the same. Uh, and Orla is going to do her best not to seem rattled and stand up and walk out. <laughs> I am leaving as well. This was not at all what I expected. Um, yeah, I'm leaving as well. Um, Louv is, has been uncharacteristically silent this whole time. Uh, out of character, there are at least three jokes I intentionally did not make. <laughs> and as she, you know, as she departs the room, she um, kind of has her head down and almost bumps into uh, Odie. You, you would think almost intentionally and just says, uh, excuse me, sister and head straight out. Um, you see her watch you. Um, I think the rest of you would also see the sister watching Lou um, as she leaves. Um, and then you see um, her kind of think about it, start to step out of form with the other sisters. But once they catch notice carefully, it snaps back into place. Um, and back into prayer as you all file out of the church into the into the night air. I think Orla's gonna loop her arm into Louvre's and lean right real close. So what are we gonna do about this Josie then? I mean, I guess it depends how long she sticks around town. Have you met her before? No, nah, I uh, I don't know who her whoever she is. Do you think she knows what you look like? Um, probably not. I mean, I'm sure she has a description, but I don't. I don't think we ever met. I mean, for Christ's sake, she thinks I change shape. And you don't do that. I mean, I'm pretty darn sure. Um, right. I mean, while, while we're talking about it, can anyone else, you know, fly or do anything like that? So I, qu quite frankly, I'm starting she to feel a little, uh, you know, underqualified. I can't anymore. I mean, at least you can shoot, Louv. I can't even do that. But I can get information. Where are we right now? Where are we having this conversation? I, outside, uh, I assumed. I mean, what? Well, where, gonna... where outside? Probably you made it out of the churchyard at this point. You can okay. kind of go down yeah, any of the streets. Yeah, Orla was being discreet. She would have waited. Right, okay. I'm just making sure. <clears throat> so, I have a stick or two of dynamite. What are you expecting to do with dynamite? Well, we just discovered a cult full of the worshippers of the demon that are getting powers from them. So... Is that what you think is happening? It. It's possible. If not this demon, then another. But there are, there are a lot of things beyond the veil that are not demons. I, I think I might have zoned out for a second of this. Is that what we think is going on? Aye. It's I've, something. I'm not on the same page, apparently. I mean, it's madly 
and Zevlin. Honestly, I think well, it's a coincidence that they're here. Maybe we ignore them, do what we need to do. All I know is that we've talked about this demon. He's manipulative, or it's manipulative. It knows how to get its way around people. It knows how its way to get powerful uh, minions with the Dulahan. And now there's this mysterious group of uh, practitioners that have shown up mysteriously, uh, are strangely not of the faith, but of the faith, uh, and getting their powers and their guidance from a being who appears in reflections in bright golden light. I have to agree. I don't trust them to help with the barrier that could get us all killed if they sabotaged it. When did you learn so much about demons? She's looking at Cormac. What happened on my way out here? Is that it? Aye. She's going to start walking faster now. Angry little short person walk. I'll grab Cormac's arm and pull him aside again. This demon is going to use our secrets to divide us. You need to tell her before it does. He won't say anything, and I'll just walk away. I'll follow after. about uh, Gabriel Luke? I'm just saying, if if Cormac was also emotionally healthy, he'd be good at everything. I Is just... she saying this to Orla? <laughs> <laughs> to, to Gabriel. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't think I could take it, you know? He's a good shot. He makes flapjacks, figures out schemes. I don't know. I mean, that, that is a very astute observation. I think everyone <clears throat> is very excellent, but there's just, I guess we can't all be perfect. We all need a, uh, an Achilles heel, as it were. Unfortunately, it is being emotionally stunted. Yeah. I, God, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> It's <sighs> funny. It's also funny because Orla is also emotionally stunted. <laughs> yeah, but but like everyone else is only good at like one thing. That's true. Luv is very frustrated with Cormac being good at everything so far this campaign. I uh, and then after after those comments, she'll she'll be like, oh, like gotta go catch up. Godspeed. Yeah. If Liv catches up with Orla, she's just, she's mutter, like mumbling and angry and just he's lying about something, Liv. I sorry, Orla. I don't I don't know much about any of that. Uh, are you okay? No. And then she keeps walking. <laughs> Jeez. As you're leaving the, the churchyard, um, Gabriel, you see in the shadows, uh, you see Zane again. Um, he's leaning against a tree, uh, smoking uh, what looks to be uh, a cigar. Uh, he's blowing large puffs of, of smoke into the air, they kind of trail off web-like into the sky. I'll just give you a nod. And they give a nod back. You're not unpacking that tonight. <laughs> uh, where are you all headed? Orla's going to work. Uh, I'm I'm following Orla, and as as Louv is is kind of like trying to keep up, just like you know, I I I know my legs are longer than yours, but like I just, you know, it's hard to look tough when you when you power walking. I just. 
she slows down. <laughs> Much obliged. I think Cormac will start going to his little attic in the bank and then stop. And turn heel and go towards the boarding house. Yeah. How about Alice? Uh, I'm following after Luv and Orla. Um, that's where I'm staying anyways. I need... I'll probably sit down in the uh, just kind of the main room in a corner. I need to do research. I have to figure out uh, what supplies I need based on this demon's uh, uh, preferences, uh, which is an occult call for me. Go for it. Uh, do you want me to go ahead and roll? Please. So this is for figuring that out. This is also will give me a bonus on the any jacks I get can be applied as a bonus on the summoning call that we do later. Um, so I'll keep track of that. Um, and it's a choice, so it, no, it's fine. Uh, ooh, that's good. That's a sixteen. It's very uh, good. Underneath the 93. Wow. <laughs> so go ahead and keep track of those those jacks yeah, for the future. That's amazing. How many, how many jacks do I need to be successful here? Um to well, you you do succeed on that on that call. That's that is a okay. success. Um, then I'll yeah I'll save all seven of those specifically for so these are not in the river these are specifically saved for the summoning call yeah uh, those will give plus five I think five percent uh, plus five percent each that's amazing Ding dang call, which is good because that summoning call it's risky summoning a demon especially when this powerful. Um, are you going back up to your room or just kind of looking through the books that you have with you? Um, I'll grab the books I have and sit down in the main room because I don't want to spread out too much because I know that's what the demon wants. So I'm going to try and stick close uh, to everyone. Uh, you want... Sorry, go ahead. You find information deep in these these books. You're, you're looking, you're looking nothing seems to fit quite right and then you remember the very old some very old books that you have um ones ones that you don't usually touch they're they're a little bit more um biblical um and you don't usually mess with those you go for the more scientific texts but just on a on a, on a whim you can crack open one of these more biblical texts and you see these very detailed descriptions of these ancient demons. Things that have been bound deep, deep on the other side. But you're reading about gathering followers and these demons that hide in plain sight for years and years. And it just starts to sound a little too familiar. You think you're probably dealing with something very old that is going to be amassing massive followers. So I am looking, I need for summoning, I need materials of its nature in tribute to gain its attention. And the examples it gives are like a demon of war and strife may respond to bullets, arrowheads, fine re weaponry, that sort of thing. So like what, am I getting a sense of what to summon this specific demon when you had spoken with it before or when it had been spoken about with the doulahan you remember the mention of despair featuring very very heavily I have some ideas. 
All right. I'll keep reading until um, I'll watch for Cormac to come back because I feel like this is a confirmation of what he was thinking and he would want to know that. So. Uh, Gabriel, where did you head after? Uh, are you following the uh, Louvre, Alice, and Orla, tracking with Cormac, something else? Um, I'm pretty sure now that it's night. Is the father still preaching on uh, his new soapbox? Uh, yeah, he is. He's sitting on his new soapbox. Uh, he's taking a little break. Uh, it looks like somebody brought him like a little glass of water. Uh, he's 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 taking a break. Uh, posted up on his soapbox, and he sees you walk by. Gabriel. They don't say anything. He's safe for now. <laughs> We're praying on that box. But uh, no, they're gonna um, get married from the schooner and board up for the night. All right, where do you park the schooner? Um, are you parking it in town, outside? Um, I think outside. Mm -hmm. Since they're probably gonna head out again. Don't need to bring it into town proper, be a waste yeah. of time. And you were staying at the boarding house as well, right? Am I remember that correctly? I think so. So yeah, you would, or you, sorry. I'm sorry, for, just for a little uh, sprinkle of context, they're going to invite the spider with the, just like reach out of the way and offer a hand. One by one, the legs start to leave the web and will daintily just sit on your hand. Now we're going to the boarding house. Okay. The spider settles in. Um, and you do see the shadow of uh, the familiar shadow shadow of Cormac uh, heading into the boarding house as well. Cormac, are you going to go see uh, Josie? Is that where you're headed? Absolutely. All right. Uh, once you when you enter the boarding house, there's uh, a large kind of potted plant sitting in the front. There's the kind of the madam who runs. Madam isn't the right word. The the mistress who runs the boarding house, uh, sitting at a desk in, in the front. Uh, there's a large kind of community kitchen in the room behind her, and you see at the table, um, sullenly drinking uh, coffee, is a um, a very petite woman dressed in leathers. Um, she has uh, long dark hair that's pulled back into uh, a single braid. Um, She's, uh, she appears to be uh, a native woman. She's wearing uh, a gun on her hip. And yeah, sullenly drinking coffee. And if you ask for, uh, for Josie, that's where you're, you're pointed to. Yeah, Cormac Wooden would go and just, do you mind if I sit down with you? Mm. Go ahead. You look grim. Yeah, well, you're in the business long enough. You look to be pretty handy yourself. What, uh, what's your business? Oh, I haven't had a trade in a while. Uh, the last one I did was killing the kins king's men. Nice. And what trade are you in? Fine things. People. I'm good at it. So you're the one that's posted up all the signs. Yes. Have you seen something? Uh, I've seen the signs. Belize not being... Uh, no, but Belize not being not very good at your job. Excuse you? What brings you here? What makes you think there's a shapeshifter here? I heard word. A couple names I've been following. Someone may have gone out west. 
So I've been following the spots where people come when they don't want to be found. Digging up names. Met some interesting, you meet some interesting folks along the road. Good stories. Hi. That, you, that you've got some good stories. Hi. You willing to tell them? Depends what stories. Have you ever seen anything you couldn't explain? At first, I, but there's always an explanation for something. Hmm. You got that right. You got that right. So what, what names are you following? Lady by the name of Elodie. Fine lady. Would be nice, noble bearing, but trouble. Arson, murder, dismemberment. Well, the only, uh... The only lady that I know that has a fine temperament, like you're saying, is not known for those things. Most people who do those things try not to be known for those things. People are good at hiding. Aye. Aye. Now, you wouldn't have sought me out unless you've seen something. People don't just come up and talk to me. I'm not incredibly personable. Well, you see, I care for this town and the people in it. Oh. And there's an incredible dearth of signs up that's going to cause the trouble. A fuss. And I know just about everyone in this town. There's no one of the name Elodie. And the only one who bears the description that you have uh, is of the name Alice, a refined individual. Uh, and I can guarantee that she has nothing to do with those things. She may have other skeletons in her closet presently, uh, but I'm not one to speak on those. Alice, where can I find this Alice? At this moment, I don't rightly know. I'll find her. Right on. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, and I appreciate your concern, but there's nothing that shakes these kinds of folks out, like a little trouble. Once the rumors start to fly... I'm sorry, are you, a, are you a, a person of the law at all? Mm. Ugh, when it's necessary. Is there a badge you can show me? Somewhere. She starts digging in pockets and pouches. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, I left it somewhere. Well, that's a dumb shame. Do you have a badge? No. Huh. But with that... I don't care if you think you found who you want or you do or not. You're not touching a hair on anyone's head in this song. I see. So it's threats now. Interesting. No. I'm just setting a boundary. Noted. It's good to right. meet you. What's your name again? Oh, I didn't give it to you. And Cormac will get up and leave. Nice. Uh, Gabriel, where are you for this exchange? Did you, <laughs> did you see this exchange? <laughs> um, for the sake of being uh, plot spicy, I'll say they, they caught like wind of it. Not necessarily like eavesdropping, but just being wary for Cormac's sake. Uh, Cormac probably gets up and sees Gabriel and says, 
nods and leaves without saying another word. But waits outside. Okay. Um, uh, once they notice that Cormac is like staying at the door, they'll uh, exit as well. Long day. Entirely too long. My goodness. Um, like they're they're looking for words, but in a, like just making gestures at Cormac. <laughs> You Which part? That. that uh, I've seen people of their like before. Uh, the English used to send them into town looking for other Fenians. Uh, back home. And you get right word to say no. And you set that precedent right away. Uh I see, um, but you are right. We should possibly depart. Um, I guess I'll just go back to the city limits and give the old schooner another night. You should probably bring it in town. All right, then I'll bring it in town. I'll, uh... I guess I'll see you in a moment. I'll be coming with you, just for safety's sake. It's night and... That would be very uh, pleasant, thank you. As the two of you leave, you see uh, another... Uh, Gabriel, you look back to see maybe if Sam's in the churchyard, uh, but instead you see another figure kind of leaving from the rectory, a veiled person, one of the sisters. Uh, you see she's kind of looking back and forth, looking over her shoulder, um, running between hedges. You almost wouldn't, wouldn't notice her if you weren't looking. Um, keeping to the shadows, very practiced at this. Um, and she sticks to those shadows and heads into town. Um, Gabe does uh, give Cormac a look and just kind of uh -oh finger waggles the, the whatever darting position uh she was taking <sighs> establishes full of surprises i will put money on that's the one that Louvre saw seems like a fair assumption right well, let's get that schooner of yours and uh, head back to the tavern to make sure that nothing blows up while we're gone. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Uh, you had a quick move so. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question, Gabriel. Um, you seemed a bit shaken by the events of last night, but you were mostly quiet with all of the sisters, what do you think of them? Well, I would hate to be too reactionary in a uh, situation such as that. We were clearly outnumbered, and who wants to offend when we could have been uh, in more unfortunate circumstances? Oh, I am in agreement there. Luckily, um, I have um, well versed in adjustments fairly quickly. Uh, well, I think I cut your meaning. I'm, glad I'm not. Oh, not good at that at all. You know, I. Pulling back from previous conversations I've had, it's it's uh, surprising to hear that you're not adept at something. It's more that I know the things that I'm good at and I focus on them. I stay away from the things I'm shite at. Ah. Uh. Uh. 
Well, I think the situations we find ourselves in there would be great practice. Oh, I hope not. I hate that. Unfortunately, here we are. Here we are. As you walk back uh, to the schooner in the night, uh, I think that we'll find ourselves once more finally in the in the bar. We see uh, Alice pouring over books. Um, Orla and, and Luth, where do we where do we see you? So when Orla comes into work, um, she's going to go up to the bartender and. Uh, um, what remind me the bartender's name? Madame Vesta. Yes. But what's her first name? Because I don't think that Orla would call her boss Madame Vesta. I don't know if she would tell you. Really? Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it might be a running joke that she tells you a different first name every time. Got it. Okay. She comes up. Um. Good evening. Good evening. Um. Madame Vesta. I have, has a Josie come in here? Josie, a sullen woman, very short. Is she asking questions? Yes, she's asking a lot of questions. Right. Asking people, asking to hang up posters in my bar. I told her to get. <sighs> yeah, we saw the posters. Um. Could you write me a list of the questions that she's asking? I write you a list. Yeah, I suppose. That that would be really helpful, actually. Also, um, when any of the, the gentlemen offer to buy me a drink, could you just pour me some, some iced tea or something and cha- keep the coin for yourself, for the difference, for the liquor? She kind of raises her eyes, eyebrows, and smiles slightly. Oh, well. Making a change? Trying, anyway. Leave them to the right place. I'll keep you on the straight and narrow. Grand. Could you share the coin with me? Of course. Grand. When I'm not actually drinking, I'll get them to buy more because, you know, I'll be sober, so... Oh. I won't have to cut off myself. We're about to uh, clean up, aren't we? Right. That's you. that's the plan. I stay sober, we make some money. I and you make like me that style. list. You've got a deal. Great. Right then. I promised Jackson I'd sing his favorite song, so I better get on that. Maybe you'll buy your drink, too, or right. to where you're at it. You know he's going to. Um, and she goes up and sings Jackson's right, favorite uh, song. Right about that time as she leaves Madame Vesta, uh, Louv kind of pops up and says, uh, Hey, Ola. What? Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe I should uh, be laying low and, and, and not going back to, to my place. It's all right if I use your room. Right, you can you can stay with me. It's not a problem. Thanks. I I think I'm gonna head up there and uh, you know start filing on these bullets. I I don't really want to explain that to anyone in the front room. So, right, that's something we should definitely do behind closed doors. Um, do you want me to send some food up? I, uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I'd I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I've got it. Um, while you're up there. Will you go through all of the places that I hide my liquor and toss it out, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I know most of them. You know all of them. And you'll find the rest. (laughs) I'll send you some food and she will, um, leave Louvre, go tell Madame Festa to send some food up for Louvre and then get up on stage and sing Jackson's favorite song. As you're singing, the strains of the music carry out into the street and uh, you're interrupted at one point by the bang of the, of the door of the, the tavern. You see standing there looking very out of place is one of the sisters um, looking wild-eyed and 
a little scared and she's scanning the bar. She's uh, scanning everything, looking for someone. Orla's gonna hop down. Uh, sorry, um, I'm not feeling right. I'll come back and sing the song in a moment and we'll run over to the girl. Because, you know, a woman in distress is very obvious to Orla. Um, and she'll uh, loop her hand, like, the same way that she does to Louvre, she loops her arm in hers. Um, I can, I can see you're looking for someone, dear. Why don't you come over here? And we'll walk her over to where Alice... Well, no, because we don't trust these sisters. She's not going to walk her to Alice. Um, she's going to walk her to another table and say, um, why don't you sit down? I know everybody in town. I could probably help you. Who are you looking for? Um, I... Uh, she's got a gun. Um, she's... I don't mean to interrupt you, dear, but most of the women in this town have a gun. Oh. Um, she... She's got... She's got scars. Okay. Face and, and 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 she's she gives the best hugs. Um, I don't know what name she's. Orla starts thinking who has scars and gives very good hugs. I think I know who you're looking for. Um, why are you here though? Because I'm I'm. She's been protecting me, and I'm quite protective of her as well. I'm glad. I'm glad she has you then. Um, she's, I, I just want to talk to her. That's all. No funny business, I swear. And do the sisters know that you're here? You see her just swallow visibly and look over her shoulder. Right then, follow me and she'll take her upstairs to um, her quarters. And uh, she'll stick her head in the door. Wait there for a second. And she'll stick her head in the door. Uh, Louvre. Uh, when you poke your head in the door, you see Louv sitting on a chair facing away from you. Uh, she seems to be taking a moment before getting started on either of the tasks she came up here to do. And she's holding her gun and she's rubbing with her thumb an inscription on the bottom of the handle. It says Dent, D-E-N-T. Uh, Louv, there's someone here to see you. Uh, a girl? Uh, you, you've got to be mistaken. I mean, who who comes here to see me? Well, somebody who says that you'll have scars on your face and give good hugs, so I imagine she knows who you are. Well, I mean, I mean, the thing about thing about Quit hugging being is stubborn and just can I bring her in? I'm just saying, hugging and choking is basically the same thing, and I'm real good at. And as she turns around and catches sight of this figure in the hallway. She stops speaking. Right then. Um, do you need me to stay or should I go back downstairs and leave you alone? Uh, I, uh, I think, I think we'll be fine here. All right. Make a noise if you need me to send up some cowboys to deal with whatever this is and she goes back downstairs. Yeah, uh, safe word is help, same as usual. And she just stands there in the doorway, looking at you, Lou. Uh, Orla pushes her in on her way out <laughs> and closes the door. <laughs> um, I think she she just stands there for a minute and then just goes in for the hug. Louv is... Louv also stands there for a minute in silence and then doesn't doesn't move in uh, for the hug. But as she is hugged, like she pauses for one more second and suddenly her arms are around this person and um, she just pulls them in as tightly as, they, as she can. If it's, all, if it's all right with all of you, I think that's where we pick up next time. I think that's fair. All right. All right. Let's take a quick, quick break. Or do you all? Oh, yes. Oh, outros. Oh my gosh. I am. 
all over the place tonight. I am so sorry. Uh, yes, thank you. And I have an outro for next time. Wow. So our Western winds keep a blowing, our tail won't end here. Tune in next time for where the winds take our paragons next. Sleep well, cow folks. This has been a Haunted West actual play. Uh, let's see where we can find our lovely cast. Let's start with Cameron. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Cameron. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at WorldSmith underscore Cam, where I talk about uh, the things that inspire my writing uh, and where I talk about being a writer, actor, uh, tabletop designer, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can catch me uh, on this show for our last episode uh, the next time you, we meet. Uh, and on the next two Wednesdays, uh, depending on when this airs, uh, for the uh, Honey and Dice's uh, Kinesis RPG. Uh, and you can find me on uh, Fair Season, which is maybe a weekend that's been gone, but I'll be talking about playing characters and being in a one-shot. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll see you out there. All right. Uh, Dana? Uh, yeah, I am Dana Ebert. Uh, same, same as Cameron, I am a author, tabletop designer, and actor. Uh, you can find me on social media as Mistress Dana RPG. You can also check out my website, which is dmdana.com, where you can find my, my list of credentials and things. The next books that I have coming out uh, around to the end of August are um, Pathfinder Bounty Number 20, Burden and Blood Cove, and what is it? The Pathfinder Lost Omens World Guide, in which I, I wrote the uh, the cuisine chapter. So keep an eye out for that if you like Pathfinder. Um, that is it for me. Travel uh, guide. Travel guide. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Vin, what have you got going on? Um, well, again, guys, hi, I'm Vin at VinVox V8 on Twitter. Uh, I'm a voice actor and a tabletop performer. And if you, again, follow on Twitter, you see all my announcements, casting calls, auditions, things to help you out and get you involved in the space. I always forget this, and I remember today, uh, I'm a Game T affiliate. So if you go to GameT.co.uk and use code VinVox, uh, VA, you get a little discount, and I get a little something. So uh, try that out. Anna, what's going on with you? I'm Anna, aka Archival Dust Pony, most places on the internet, queer and trans advocate museum worker, and TTRPG streamer and podcaster. If any of, the, any of that sounds interesting, you can find me on Twitter at Archival Dust Bun. Um, as far as where to find me Monday nights, you can find me on Party Wipe, Party Wipe Games, uh, playing Greetings from Republic City, our Avatar Legends campaign. Um, I play a waterbender from the Northern Water Tribe who participated in the uh, Water Tribe Civil War and has feelings about that and has since left for Republic City. Um, uh, the first Sunday of every month, normally you can find me on Thorny Dried's channel. Uh, August, we will not be having a game. So um, just a heads up for that, but our first three episodes are available um, on VOD over on Thorny Dried's Twitch channel. So if you haven't had a chance to catch up, we have an amazing cast um, over there and some really great characters. It's definitely worth watching. It's still early in the campaign, so uh, easy to catch up. Um, everything else I'm kind of winding down currently uh, because of an upcoming medical hiatus, uh, but the best place to keep up with my schedule is on Twitter. Uh, but if podcasts are your thing um, and you enjoy sci-fi, giant mech battles in space, uh, check out Response Team Omnicron, a Lancer actual play podcast uh, following a PR team who unexpectedly ends up on the front lines of a brewing conflict. Uh, we have narrative um, First, uh, mech combat, role-play focused characters. We've been described as if Battlestar Galactica had its own red versus blue. Um, and we just hit 3,000 downloads and released our first outtake reel, which we're very excited about. Uh, it's a great time to jump in uh, as we're wrapping up this current arc. Uh, so check that out anywhere you normally get your podcast uh, and on Twitter at RT Omnigron. And Nikki. All right. So uh, I'm Nikki. I am the producer here at TEA TRPG. And um, we have a lot of really cool stuff going on. But uh, by the time you see this, it will be done. So uh, if you contributed to during Fayfair, thank you very much. Um, that's really awesome of you. Um, 
keep an eye out for my episode of Kill Every Monster. I'm really excited about that coming out, um, and it should be out fairly soon. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. You can follow me everywhere that I want you to find me as halfling underscore Nikki and I K K I, and um, tune in because we have dead or alive we have a wander a untitled wander home which is now a type i have a title uh the contaminated's done uh, but we have avatar is as well and after avatar is done we're bringing masks back so keep an eye out on our twitter and we will see you on the internet